Hi, we recently had a thread on our forums that was talking about the production line testing we do to our loudspeakers. And there seemed to be some confusion as to how involved this uh, testing was. So we decided it was an excellent topic for a video showing the different steps that we take to test the various parts and then the final assembled loudspeakers. Now, the testing is actually very involved because there's a number of steps in testing the various components like the crossovers, the drive units themselves, and then the entire system. It is not simply a sweep to see if the speaker makes sound. We actually do very detailed measurements at every step of the way, and you'll see that in some of the next segments. One of the most important components of a loudspeaker is something that's called the crossover network, um, sometimes referred to as a filter network or a dividing network. And we've got one here. This is actually for our M60 model. And it's basically a circuit board that contains a bunch of electronic components like resistors, capacitors, and inductors. And it's responsible for essentially dividing the entire frequency band into the individual chunks that the individual drivers will carry. So for instance, we want to send the woofer in a speaker system only the low frequency sound. So the filter will actually prevent high frequency sounds from getting to the woofers. Similarly, for the tweeter, we don't want low frequency sounds getting to the tweeter, just high frequency sounds. So the filter will make sure that only those high frequency sounds get to the tweeter. Because we manufacture pretty much all of our components in-house, including all of our crossover networks, um, we have the benefit of being able to keep very tight controls on the quality of these parts. And because they are such a critical component of the speaker, every single one of them is tested and measured. And here we're sitting at what we've nicknamed the hot dog cart, um, where we have a measurement system which allows us to measure the electrical characteristics of each section of the crossover network individually. And if you can see the screen here, there's three curves, one blue, one pink, and one black. Those correspond to the woofer, mid-range, and tweeter section of this M60 crossover. This is just another example of the, uh, of the lengths that we go to to ensure that every part and every component that goes into our products is of the top quality. So we go to the lengths of manufacturing our own drive units, our woofers, tweeters, and mid-ranges at Axiom. Um, even though it would be very simple to go and buy them off the shelf because there's lots of manufacturers making these, uh, these types of drivers, but one of the reasons, and really the most important reason to make them in-house, other than having full design control over the parts, is that you then also have full control over the quality of every part that goes into your loudspeakers. And there are a number of steps along the way while we are building transducers that we actually perform measurements on them. And as a final test, just like the crossover networks, and just like the entire system is tested before it gets boxed up and is shipped to a customer, each individual drive unit is also tested. Now, we made the investment a couple of years ago into a state-of-the-art measurement system from a company called Listen Inc., and part of it is this interface box that's down here. And it allows us, with a very, very quick uh, signal sweep, to do an entire suite of measurements. And I'll give you an example of what that measurement sounds like and how quickly it is. Just take this part out. And in the time, it's about three seconds for that, that noise to happen. In this test box where we have a microphone mounted, it's like a mini anechoic chamber. We're able to measure not only the frequency response or the amplitude response of the drive unit, but we're also measuring the impedance. We're measuring for any buzzes or mechanical noises. We're measuring distortion. And all of those things are measured individually, and each one of those items will get a green light or a pass if they are within specification. So 
we determine our own tolerances and they're very, very tight. Um, on something like a tweeter, it's a dB and a half is our, is our measurement window, um, which is very, very hard to achieve if you're buying a batch of tweeters from uh, another company rather than making them yourself. And this is really one of the most critical components along with the crossover network that make up the loudspeaker. Yes, the cabinet is important, but it's those components that go into the speaker that are very important. And that's why we go to such great lengths to make sure that they're tested and they meet our stringent quality requirements every step of the way. So here we are at the place where the final stage of testing of our loudspeaker products occurs. And because we've already gone through and individually tested the crossover network, we've tested all of the drive units individually, We've assembled them into a speaker cabinet. This is an M3 that we have sitting here. Um, now, of course, we want to test the complete speaker as a system to make sure that everything is working together properly and that everything's been wired properly and that there are no, no issues with, you know, a loose wire, etc. So we actually have a small anechoic chamber here and the speaker is actually sitting on the conveyor belt of the production line. So this is right in line, in stream with the normal flow of our, of our production line. And we stop the conveyor belt, mount the speaker pointing inwards into this chamber, and there's a microphone inside that chamber. We'll do a frequency response curve. We use the same measurement equipment and same system that we do for our large anechoic chamber. We'll also do, do a polarity test, and the reason we do a polarity test is there's a possibility, although it happens very infrequently, for the polarity of the input terminal to be reversed from what it should be. And what would happen in that case is if you got one speaker that was wired in phase and then one out of phase, the sound would be all wrong and you wouldn't get any bass. So it's a very important aspect to check. Finally, we'll do a sweep at a high level where, in that case, the calibrated measurement microphone is actually the operator's ears. Because in that case, we're trying to detect things that are very difficult to pick up with a microphone. Things like wires buzzing inside the cabinet, um, a loose screw, etc. So all of those aspects are tested essentially by ear after all of the other tests are done. So you've seen the various steps that go into the production testing of the Axiom loudspeaker models, but we're actually here now in the Axiom chamber lab. This is our full-size anechoic chamber. Because there's one speaker in our lineup, that's the LFR 1100, which can't be measured uh, at the same end of line test booth as our other products. There's a couple of reasons for this. One is it's a fairly complex system involving multiple amplifier channels and a dedicated DSP box. The other is because it's an omnidirectional loudspeaker, um, if we measured it in a, in a non-totally anechoic environment, what would be going on between the front and rear sections would mess up the signal. So we have to actually measure that, that speaker in the full-size anechoic chamber. Now, when this chamber lab was built and we situated the chamber, we made sure to locate it literally 20 steps away from the production line. The reason we did that is that so when we encountered models that we had to test in this environment, that it was, it was nearby. The other reason is it allows us to do regular checks of quality of products coming off the line by pulling them randomly off the line into the full-size anechoic chamber and then we can measure them against our references. So the measurements that take place on an LFR speaker, we measure the front and the rear sections independently. We also measure them together and we do a full family of curves to measure the sound power. And the reason we do that on every model is because there are different interactions occurring um, and those interactions between the front and back drivers 
uh, can change those individual response curves. So we have to do a very detailed measurement here, whereas the other models we can get away with doing a single on-axis frequency response. So hopefully that's answered uh, the question of what we do for our production testing of our loudspeaker models. You can see that it's very involved and in the luxury of manufacturing almost all of the components in-house is that we can do this sort of testing along the way and guarantee a high quality product that matches very closely to our references. Thank you. Look at this.